One of the best ways to add flair to any project is to include some inlay. It's an easy technique for elevating your projects to the next level. It's also a great way to feature some exotic lumber without having to buy much of it. Like all decorative enhancements, it's easy to go a little overboard with inlay. So here's a few general things to keep in mind. Use restraint. Adding inlay to every part of a project can really look tacky. A thin strip around the edge of a tabletop or the lid of a box is classic. Use contrasting woods such as maple and walnut and dark inlay on light colored wood usually looks better than light inlay on a dark colored wood. And lastly, thin inlay usually looks better than wide strips. Think of it as furniture pinstriping. Of course, all of these are very general aesthetic rules and so there's no rule that says you can't experiment and break all of those rules, so you do you. And before we get started, I wanted to remind you that if you are woodworking curious and need some clear direction, start by downloading my guide to setting up a shop for under $1,000. It's free over at mytoolist.com. First, you wanna cut a groove into your workpiece using either table saw or a router. I like to keep this groove fairly shallow, maybe an eighth of an inch deep. That's about three millimeters. You can use dado blades or just make a few passes through a single blade to make this groove as wide as you like. For this one, I'll just make a thin pinstripe using just the kerf of the saw blade. I'll use a quarter inch straight bit on my router for this groove. I don't have any router bits smaller than that. Now you can rip the thin inlay strips on your table saw. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. Here's two methods that I like. It's really important to install a zero clearance insert plate so that the wood doesn't fall into your saw. And use a scrap board for testing. For this method, work on cutting the width first and get it to fit perfectly. Okay, once you've got that rip fence set exactly for the width of the cut, take your good board, the board you're gonna use for the inlay, and you're gonna resaw it on its edge. And I'm not gonna go all the way through the board, just partially through it. So I'm gonna raise the blade up, I don't know, about half the width of that board. Set up a feather board so that you can apply pressure against the board on this side of the blade, and then use two push sticks to push the board all the way through the saw. Depending on how narrow your inlay is, you might be able to make two passes. Just flip the board around on the second pass so you get twice as many strips. Of course, you could just resaw the board all the way through if you like, but I like to do it halfway because I feel like it gives me a little bit more control over the wood in this next step. Now that I've got the widths of the inlay, I can cut them to their final thicknesses, a little bit thicker than the depth of that groove. Since these strips are gonna be cut so thin, I like to set up a stop block on this side of my blade. I'm just gonna use this feather board right about there. And then I'll just move my rip fence in for each cut. So my first cut should be a bit of a test, but I'll try to get it pretty accurate. Again, these cuts aren't as critical as the width. So that's a pretty good fit, but I think I cut it a little bit too shallow because it's dropping down. And I want it raised just a little proud of my workpiece so that I can sand it all flush. So what I can do is just move this over slightly and make the rest of the cut. And most likely you would use a longer board than in this demonstration. And you can just batch out a whole bunch all at once. 
The second method will spare you from having to resaw a board along its edge. This time you're gonna cut the thicknesses first by just ripping out strips along the edge of the board. So the reason why I'm not cutting the thin strips on this side is because I would have to move my fence in about that close and push this way. And that leaves the cutoff side, this thin strip, unsupported. I have this thin eighth inch fence on my gripper, but even that is a little bit too thick to fit inside of there. So I think it's just a little bit easier and probably get a better cut by setting up a stop block over on this side, and then just moving the fence in each time like I did before. Of course, the other option here would be to cut the grooves deeper so that your inlay strips don't have to be so thin. The only advantage to having the thin inlay strips is that you'll get more strips out of the wood, and presumably you might be using some more expensive wood for this. So it's just a more economical way to make those strips thin. And yet another option would be to completely resaw a board into thin pieces like this. This would be much easier to do on a bandsaw rather than a table saw, especially if it's this wide. So there's just a lot of different ways to make inlay strips. So the drawback to using this method is that now you have to resaw these really thin boards and try to keep them pressed against your table saw without them chattering or wanting to flip back up. So in this case, I really want to use my rip fence to set that width. Since I've got a bunch of these, I need that width to be accurate. So the way I'm gonna do it is use that really thin extension leg on my gripper. If you don't have one of these, you could also just use a two by four to just hold the board down. You just need pressure on both sides of that piece as it runs through your saw. And another problem you might encounter is if your fence doesn't meet flush with the top of your table, like mine is. So in that case, I have to use an extra board and I'll clamp this to my rip fence to prevent these pieces from sliding under it. For this pinstripe one, I think it makes the most sense to cut the width first. So I'm gonna go back to using this setup with the stop block. Again, I don't really wanna cut it on this side. It's just too easy for that to just shoot back at you when it's that thin. This way, when the inlay piece is done cutting, it can just fall off. And now I can rip this to its thickness. And again, this doesn't have to be an exact thickness as long as it's proud of the groove. So all you gotta do to install the inlay is just squeeze some glue into the grooves and press the strips into place. There's usually no need to clamp them, but if they are a little bit loose or popping out in spots, you can hold them in place with some painter's tape. So if you wanted, you could wait for the glue to dry and then just use maybe a hand plane and smooth this flush with your workpiece. But what I like to do is sand it before the glue is dry. That way, if there's any gaps where the inlay doesn't exactly meet up with the groove, the sanding dust mixed with the glue will fill in those gaps. Of course, it's only truly satisfying when you add some finish to it and see that inlay pop out. I'll just hit it with a little spray lacquer. 